What's up? Thanks for joining us. My name is Paul Livingstone. I've been deeply involved with Music of India for over 30 years. I've been very blessed to study under some of the greatest maestros of India, such as the legendary Ravi Shankar, Omir Dashgupta, and Rajiv Taranath. Well, I grew up playing blues and rock and roll from uh, an early age, and then I had this great opportunity to go to India at age 15 and study sitar and tabla. Later, I studied jazz, classical, and a variety of other world music traditions at CalArts, where I subsequently taught for five years. Over the years, I've developed a creative approach to my own, what I call, raga jazz music, synthesizing the melodies and rhythms of India with Western music forms. The Exploring Raga Music and Rhythms of India series is for musicians who want to develop new skills and stretch their ears in a challenging and fun way. This video series is recommended for players or singers with a good level of technical ability. It doesn't matter whether you have a classical, jazz, Latin, popular, or some other music background. What I want to share with you today are three key skills which form the practical strategies for understanding this beautiful, timeless raga system and utilizing the intricate rhythmic architectures of Indian music. In doing so, you'll have the opportunity to explore what these forms can do for you and your music. Approaching Indian music with Western instruments can be daunting for a number of reasons. We're going to look at some of the challenges and limitations of this later. But what I'm confident of is this. There is an abundance of amazing musical material accessible to Western musicians who take the time to learn these simple principles. The strategy summed up in these three key skills will help you gain an authentic understanding of the music of India. Practicing this will open your ears to first decipher the sounds you hear, and second, enable you to incorporate this rich ocean of musical possibility into your own music. The foundation is going to come from deep listening, from the slow meditative development of the ragas, to the exciting integration of these melodies with the talas. As an intermediate, advanced level, even a professional musician with many years of experience, if you have a fascination with Indian music, these videos will show you a way to harness the intricate and beautiful system of music which India has given the world. And as you do this, you'll find yourself becoming a better musician in whatever style you play. All right, I'm going to play along with this raga jazz tune from our first record called Arohi. I'm playing an old Epiphone guitar that I transformed into a nine-string fretless, and now it's called the Ragaphone. The piece is called the Mora the Merrier, and it's set to an evening raga, one that we're going to study called Yaman Kalyan. Throughout this piece, I integrate Indian rhythms into the melodic parts of the band. All right, check this out. Arohi is the name of our Raga Jazz Ensemble. We've been performing and recording new music for the past 15 years. Arohi means an upward movement, a concept we'll study which is unique to Indian music. You see, most ragas have a specific ascending and descending scale built into the very structure of the raga. My goal here is to make this seemingly complicated, esoteric and mystical music simple to understand. 
First of all, we're going to gain a foundation from which to appreciate Indian music with a high level of understanding. But beyond that, those who dive in and work these three key skills will have the opportunity to personalize this living musical tradition. All right, so what are these three secret skills you need to know to understand Indian music? Well, you know what? There's no secret at all. It's just common sense. And I'm convinced that developing these skills daily will give you a solid foundation for understanding raga music in a relatively short time. This content, incorporated into daily practice, can provide months of study just applying these three keys. Hey, Paul, what are these three keys that you keep talking about? Hey, Peter, welcome, man. Hey, everyone, this is one of my students, Peter Kalmus, a physicist with a speciality in gravitational waves. Peter now studies clouds and is a published writer on issues of climate change. So yeah, Peter, I agree. Let's get to the point. Let's blow the clouds of mystery off the subject of raga music. I'd like to ask you what you feel is the foundation of Indian music. You've been to India and studied Drupad. Oh, Paul, I'd say it's a kind of a complex interaction between a deeply coded system of melody known as raga and a highly mathematical system of rhythm known as tala, mm -hmm which have all kinds of microtones and microbeats and twists and curls. And this all sits on top of an encompassing philosophical aesthetic tradition known as rasa that even includes a musical cosmology or theory of everything known as nad yoga. Word, wow. Wow, you know what? That's all kind of true and everything, but what I'm talking about is actually something super simple. All right, are you ready for this? So these are the three key practice skills. Number one, deep listening. Deep focused listening is a skill. It takes attention, persistence, and daily practice. Hopefully, as a musician, you already have this skill. We're supposed to be good listeners, right? OK, so we're just going to apply skillful listening to Indian music as we develop an understanding of the vital concepts central to this music. Number two, vocalizing. Yes, singing and reciting rhythms. We're going to be doing this like crazy, and it really works. If it didn't work, I wouldn't be doing it every day. This is about internalizing the music bit by bit, one chunk at a time. I'll explain why and how this works in a little bit, but we'll go way deeper into this in later videos. Number three is integration. This is applying the material with a high degree of musicality within the context you're in, applying the new forms, rhythms, and melodics naturally into your own songs, compositions, and improvisations. Sa is short for shatja, the mother note. This is our foundation, and when we sing it, it should feel like home. Once sa is fixed, it gives birth to the other notes of the scale, according to the raga. Sa can be any note, but once it is fixed, all the other notes then take their identity by the interval they possess in relationship to Sa. Sa -ri -ga -ma -pa -da -ri -sa So you always strive to hear each note of the scale in relationship to the Thanpura drum. Hey, Peter, let's sing this together now.
Now, if you take the first four note names, sa, re, ga, and ma, and you cram them together into one word, dropping the second and fourth vowels, what do you get? Sargam. Sargam is the word named after the first four letters of the Indian solfege system. So from now on, when you hear the word sargam, think solfeggio. The Indian solfege is very important to learn. For now, just understand that these sargams represent the notes, like scale degrees of our very familiar seven note scales. This scale is called Balavo in North India. And as I'm sure you've heard, is the equivalent to the major scale. This scale should be sung and practiced ideally in the morning. Here's the scale again. This time you can try singing along with us. Whether singing or playing, I encourage you to learn to play and utilize a real tanpura. Everyone can start using a tanpura app, recording, or electronic tanpura of some sort. But I feel that playing a real tanpura and singing along is something that gives you a very rich and musical experience. The first thing we do is listen to the sound of our voices within the sonic frame of the tanpura. So when we listen to raga music or we sing or play ourselves, the tonic sa should be very obvious to our ears. The sa is the note that we should hear as the ground floor, providing the context or tonal center, which in Indian classical music does not change or modulate during a performance. The second scale to practice is called kalyan, and this should typically be sung in the evening. Its Western equivalent is the Greek Lydian mode. So let's start by just singing this simple scale. Sa re ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga ri sa In the next video, we're going to begin to study a very famous evening raga based on this Kalyan scale. This rag is known as Yaman. Here's a preview of what this rag sounds like on my fretless ragaphone. This is a very short alap, the most meditative movement that opens the raga. The third scale we'll learn is called Bhairavi, and it's equivalent to the Phrygian scale in the Greek system. So now we're making flat, or komal, as they say in India, the second, third, sixth, and seventh degrees of the scale. Just try singing along with this. All right, check out this simple gut or instrumental composition in the rag Bhairavi, played on this Godin jazz guitar. I think I'll play this in the classic 
rock and roll key of F flat. I'm sure that you can hear the differences in the intervals and the sounds of these three scales. But just note in your mind that the sargams, these note names we're using, these do not change. For instance, whether I sing shudaga, ga, or komalga, ga, the name of the note is the same. We're now deep into the era of the internet where technology affords us the amazing opportunity to learn new skills at a level and speed which would have been impossible without direct contact with a guru or master musician. But keep in mind, like anything else you've learned well, developing the skills and applying the concepts we're learning in the Exploring Raga and Rhythm series requires you to practice with concentrated focus and attention. I hope you'll join us for the next episode. For now, practice singing the sargam notes up and down in these simple seven note scales. Memorizing the note names may seem a bit tedious, but I guarantee in the long run, it will be a worthwhile investment of your time and of great benefit to your ear. This practice may seem rudimentary now, but soon we're gonna quickly get into some deeper musical waters. Thanks for joining us and see you next time.